Hey there, it's Chris from Tiny Industrial. You're looking at the Oculus North, which is one of the bigger tiny house models that I build. This model is fully on and off-grid capable. And today what I want to do is talk to you about plumbing. I'm going to show you how I install the plumbing in one of these full-featured tiny houses, and walk you through that entire process and how I set it up. Okay, I'd like to do a walkthrough of the uh, water system in this tiny house. Again, this is this is the specific one for this house, but the setup could be mimicked for other tiny houses. Plumbing, very simply, it starts right there through the wall. So that is the um, that is the fill point for the system. So you hook a garden hose up to it, and that's what gets water into this tank. This is a good point to show you where and what that looks like on the outside. This is the water fill tube. This is a standard uh, garden hose connection. Mm -hmm. And you just, you know, you twist this onto your garden hose, pump water into there, and this is the water vent tube. One, it lets air out of the tank. As water is entering the tank, you gotta let the air out. Oh, so yeah. that vents. It's also your indicator when the tank is full, when you start seeing water come out of there, cool. is when you know that uh, you have uh, successfully filled the tank. All right, back to the interior. This house, however, is being designed for both on-grid and off-grid use. In other words, People are going to want to utilize the water in the tank without having it hooked up. Or, alternatively, they'll be at a campground or similar and they'll have a water hookup and they will have no need for the tank. Plus, the tank, traveling with the tank full of water, probably not an ideal scenario. So, um, so the tank is really designed uh, for the, for the off-grid use being parked on a property where on occasion uh, water can be supplied to the tank via a lengthy garden hose from the house. Anyway, anyway, I digress. So water comes in. Let me explain to you, first of all, the, the on-grid usage, because that's probably the easiest thing to explain. So when you have city water hooked up to the exterior here, and that's going to get, uh, like I said, a garden hose fitting, the water comes in, You'll notice a sort of a T branch off here on the this uh, PEX, half inch PEX setup. And then the water continues along through that piece of wood there, along and into the top of the tank. Now, there's a valve here. Again, none of this stuff is, uh, this is just kind of roughed in. None of these clamps are on yet. But there is a valve here. And if you activate this valve, in other words, when it's in this position, this valve is closed. Well, then where, where does the water go? The water goes this way. And the water goes and hits this valve, which in this scenario needs to be opened. And then what happens? Then it gets to this T intersection. This hasn't been hooked up yet. I'll explain that in a moment. And then it heads this way. And by this way, what I mean is it goes on through the wall and Now, this is still just cold water at this point. You'll notice a return here, a secondary one. This is, we're, I'm standing in the kitchen at this point. So we have a branch off for kitchen cold. And this you'll see in a second is the return for kitchen hot. So the top pipe, hot water, bottom pipe, cold water. Goes all the way back here. So you see these two branch offs. Again, the bottom one is your cold, top one is hot. Now, this is gonna get a little tricky to follow here, but those pipes go in back through here, they pass through here, they go up through this one, and lo and behold, they arrive at the on-demand hot water heater. The cold, cold in, that was the bottom one, goes in right here. So it's cold in and hot comes out the top through a couple 90 degree PEX connectors here 
I was able to get this to, to work fairly cleanly in that fashion there. Okay, so again, that goes down to there. Then we keep going. Top is hot, bottom is cold. Here's your branch off for the bathroom sink. And then finally we terminate both hot and cold here in the, in the shower area. So let's follow it around one more time. The toilet is a, uh, is a composting toilet, so there's no need for water there. And again, if we come up here to the, to the on-demand. So heading back this way, we get back to this entry point here. So that's your on-grid scenario, right? So what happens is water comes, water comes in here, goes through here because that's blocked, goes through here, and then heads this way because again, this, this is uh, not going to be viable here. There's gonna be another valve here, but let's get to the off-grid scenario. So off-grid, we close that. So there's no direct feeding of water uh, into the thing. And what we wanna do is we wanna fill up the tank. So we hook up the garden hose or whatever our water source is to fill the tank. And we have a, a, a clear line now into the tank. This happens to be a 46 gallon tank. This is all taking place under the bed area of the house. It's a good location for that. Now this tank has four uh, ports, if you will. There's two up top, two on the bottom, two largish ones and two half inch uh, ones. So what, what happens is, is these things come typically threaded but sealed. See the way that there's no way in there? So you have a, uh, a port there that I have not opened up. So that will remain sealed. So the water goes in here. Now when you're filling up a, an enclosed structure like this, it needs to vent. So in other words, the air has to be able to be pushed out of the tank. Otherwise it's, you know, like, like blowing air into a balloon. You, you, you can only <coughs> do, do that so much before something bad happens. So the way that this is going to work is water goes in and this up here is my vent valve. So what happens here is this air is going to get pushed out through here. Now this part of the system is not done yet, but what happens here is uh, there's a 90 degree turn down there. That will uh, go to a pipe very, very low in the uh, structure here and vent out the side. So that does two things. It accomplishes uh, the air being pushed out of the tank. Plus, once the tank is filled to capacity, you imagine the water level rising and rising in there until it gets to the top. And then what happens is the water starts to be ejected out um, through this pipe here. So you're pushing water in, that water is, is exiting uh, at, at the same rate it's being pushed in. So that's how you know when the tank is full without visually taking a look at it. When that vent line I was just telling you about that's going to be down there exits out the side of the house in the same uh, you know part of the house effectively where uh, the the filling is taking place as well so that's how you can check to see that you are filled up filled up filled up anyway that's your vent line okay so now let's uh, the vent line will come back into play in a second but now let's talk about uh, drawing water out of this tank that logically happens at the low point of the tank, which is down there. The water travels through this little pipe. It travels into this pump. There's a small um, filter assembly right here. It's a little hard to see, but that's a filter just in case there's uh, some kind of debris like sawdust uh, in the tank so that that gets trapped and doesn't get sent into the, uh, into the water system. The pump uh, is a 12 volt. Now, what happens here is that this pump exits out into this blue thing. Let's get a 
bigger shot of that. And this is called a pressure uh, pressure chamber. Pressure chamber, yes. This one happens to be by the folks at Waterworks. It's a two gallon, I believe. Yep, two gallon. And the way that this works is water gets pushed in by the pump uh, in through that hose and then starts to fill up this tank. Now the inside of this tank is kind of unique because it has a, a rubber uh, diaphragm in there. And back to the balloon example I gave earlier, what happens is, is the uh, water comes up and it pushes this diaphragm up and the top part of the tank is uh, filled with air. And when the water pushes in and, and uh, squeezes that diaphragm up against the air side of the tank, it creates pressure. And there is a, there's a standard sort of bicycle um, style uh, pressure valve up here. And what you do is you coordinate the pressure that the pump puts out and the pressure uh, in the tank via that valve and, and you get it so that the pump is filling this tank up and maxing out the pressure basically. So you have to, like I said, coordinate that between what the pump is able to put out and what, what pressure you, you set this to. Again, like filling a bicycle tire. And uh, what's the advantage of that? Well, the advantage of that is once you open a tap or, or use any kind of water within the house, the air pressure in here pushes that water basically out of here. Like I said, it has two gallons, that air pressure pushes it out, the air pressure gets lower. At some point, the pump's gonna kick on, right? But the beauty of it is, is that if you're just like splashing some water on your hands, or maybe, you know, even just washing your hands very quickly, what will happen is, is a little bit of water will come out of this pressure chamber, but the pump won't cycle on. If you didn't have this, uh, every time you open the tap, the pump would kick on forever long the tap is open basically and and those cycles on the pump and that pump uh, constantly being in use is a real problem so uh, well it's a problem in that there's there's excessive uh, wear on the pump just to give you a little background on what this is it's a it's a sure flow pump and it has a switch off pressure at 55 psi but uh, it's it's connected via this T down here so water pushes up into the tank via a threaded fitting in the bottom of the tank. And then, um, and then water, uh, you know, comes in that way, pushes up into the tank and gets pushed out of the tank by the air pressure that I mentioned. And then it heads off this way. Now we have here another branch off. And why do we have this? Well, this branch is off and currently goes to this valve here and this valve should always be shut the only reason you would ever want to open this valve is if you want to drain the system so what happens if you were to open this valve well this valve exits over here and now there's going to be another piece of pex tubing and lo and behold we're back to the the venting tube from the top of the uh, tank and that is going to connect with the PEX tubing behind this valve, and that was the one that was going out to exit. So, so imagine, you know, it's, it's winter time and you need to get all the water out of the system. Well, what you would do is you open this valve up. Uh, ideally, you'd still be connected to electric. Water would exit the uh, pressure tank, and at some point the pump would kick on, and the pump would continue to run until uh, it has pumped out the contents of this tank. In other words, when, when, when all the water has been pumped out via this route over here, uh, that's, that's how you're gonna get all the water out. Now, the other aspect of this is that this is kind of the lowest point in the water system, and I'll get back to that in a second. But what happens is, okay, so, so forget, the, forget the drain for a second. Let's go back to the, sort of the regular off-grid usage of this water setup. Water gets pushed out here. It's gonna go up. It's gonna be an up pipe here. And then it's going to connect into here. And if you remember where this was, this is where the sort of the on-grid, off-grid feature matches up. 
So water up here into here, and then we're back into the uh, the cold water pipe that runs uh, sort of the, the length of the wall here. What I was saying before about this being the lowest point is that again, once all the water has been pushed uh, via the pump out of the system, what you what you can do is you can open all the taps in the rest of the house, kitchen, bathroom sink, and shower. And what that will allow is again, gravity will let the water run backwards in this system and out through the drain pipe. And to help facilitate that, what I did is very minimally uh, in, in each of the in each of the spots where the um, where the pipe runs, it gets just ever so slightly higher with with uh, w with its routing. So the height over here is probably you know one or two inches above the height of the pipe here. So what that does is. Um, once you allow for air to get into the system, gravity will uh, pull the water out uh, via that drainage pipe. So you're, you're really uh, able to, to drain, you know, 90% of the water out of your system that way. The good part of that is, well, you know, you've drained 90% of the water out of the system, but the, the other part is that if you do uh, sort of want to mothball the house for a little while um, you don't have water sitting around in your pipes you know the final step of course of draining the water system again this here um, should drain but behind this panel when you open this up there is a um, there's a drainage valve here and what you do is you drain that and whatever water resides in the um, in the the heating coils within this um, on-demand water heater will then also drain out via this pipe because you don't want to leave water sitting in there because if that freezes then you know it could easily destroy your um, on-demand hot water heater all right so to finish off let me draw this all out for you no not fancy like this I'm gonna hand draw it for you so we got our tiny house Roughly like this. The one, the one that I, um, I built is, is actually a, no, not 16 inches, 16 feet. And you have over here, let's call it the bed area. And then you have over here, let's call it the bath. And so let's take a look at the, the, the plumbing. So you saw me uh, with the big tank back here. That is the tank. Right, and that's a 46 gallon. We showed you that there is H2O coming in from the outside, roughly on this corner of the vehicle. And it comes through the wall right there and travels into the tank. Now you did see, I'm gonna put these dots on here. That represents a valve. You did see me show you that there is an on-grid and off-grid option. So that was something like this. And then we have the cold water line goes around this way, all the way to the shower, which is back here. So the shower is right there. And so that's the cold water line. And then you saw the hot water heater roughly over here somewhere. So um, that's HW hot water. And what happens is, is the cold water branches off and goes into the hot water heater right there. And then out of the hot water heater comes, you guessed it, hot water. And that hot water travels back to the kitchen sink, which I'll draw in momentarily. It goes to the bathroom sink right there and then makes its way to the, uh, the shower. So cold water exits from under the bed, makes its way to all the cold water faucets. So this is kitchen sink and over here 
is the bathroom sink. Right? So those are the three areas. You got kitchen sink, bathroom sink, shower. All three have hot water. Given the setup, all three have cold water. So back to the uh, back to this part over here. There was a valve here. Then there was the exit from the tank, which leads into the pump. So that right there is the pump. Then there was that pressure tank, that round thing. I'll just call it a PT for short. Then out of the pressure tank, we're heading this way now. And lo and behold, there is another valve right there. That part of the plumbing wasn't completely done, but that is about the, uh, the extent of it. So to explain the on-grid scenario again, you've got water coming in by a garden hose right there. It comes in and in an on-grid scenario, you would close this valve and you would close that valve, basically isolating the whole tank pump setup because you're already sending pressurized water into the system and you don't need anything more than pressurized water to you know, run the system. That's what the pump does in an off-grid scenario. So what you do is you close this valve and you close that valve and you open this valve. So then the water has a direct path, pressurized path into the system, goes to all the cold water. So basically there's a branch off there there's a branch off there and then, you know, shower branch off. So cold, 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 and then branch off to the hot water heater and hot water comes out of the hot water heater, goes back to the sink, goes back to the sink, goes to the shower. That's the on-grid scenario. In the off-grid scenario, you close this valve, right? So, you, so the water can't like bypass this whole tank setup anymore. That's closed. At that point, you open this valve and you open this valve. So now we're, the water has a, like a longer path. And if you remember, the tank scenario was one where you're filling the tank until it overflows. So one thing I haven't put in here is that vent tube. And that vent tube, let's say, exits back out this way, right? So you're filling water into the tank. The air has to escape out of the tank as the water is replacing it. It goes out that vent tube. Now the other thing that you saw me do was just past the pressure tank, there was another line that had yet another valve and that ultimately connects back up to this vent tube. And that was for the drainage purposes, right? So if you, if you open this valve up right here and the pump is still getting electricity, it's an under pressure situation. The pump kicks on and basically pushes all the water out the side of the house until the tank is empty. So that's, that's this connection. And that connection just simply connects up to the same vent line, which is the overflow for the tank, which is the pressure release for the tank and so forth. So I hope that makes sense. It's a pretty basic setup. And again, it's on-grid and off-grid capable. On-grid, the pressure coming into the house with the water just simply bypasses this whole tank setup. Off-grid, you're filling the tank, drawing from the bottom of the tank, and the pump is now creating the pressure, filling the pressure tank. You open the tap on a sink, pressure tank, the air pressure in the top of the pressure tank pushes that diaphragm down, pushes water out of it and into the line. It prevents, like I said, the cycling, constant cycling of the pump, which is wear and tear in the pump. It's a rumbling, you know, noisy thing. Not terribly noisy, but it's, it's, it's annoying. So that's, that's why I like using these, uh, these pressure tanks. And that's your tiny house uh, water setup. On-grid, off-grid versions. Now, if you only need on-grid, forget this whole setup. If you only need off-grid, forget this particular valve. I mean, it's just that simple. I hope that's helped you. If you liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up underneath the video there and consider subscribing because I do more and more of this type of content. I'm gonna do an electrical system overview. 
I'm currently converting a bus and there's also my Building Your Tiny House Dream book that goes along with the video series. So think about subscribing and checking that out. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Take care.